On one beautiful clear night, a couple was relaxing around a campfire. The area was very secluded, so they were surprised to see a man walking towards them. The man was dressed oddly, as if he were in clothing from another time. The figure continued to walk toward them. And when the man reached the edge of the fire, he did not stop, but he walked straight through the campfire as if it weren't there. He simply kept walking, ignoring the flames and the people. The couple ran for their car, terrified by the encounter. New River Beach is a beautiful seacoast community in New Brunswick. There are several tales of hauntings on or around New River Beach. A lost sailor who beckons people, a beautiful woman who is glimpsed on the rocky cliffs, and the ghosts who haunt a nearby mansion called the Night House. All of these hauntings are connected to the tragic sinking of the ship, Genai. Now the Genai seemed to have been ill-fated from the beginning. The plan was to launch the ship on a Friday which was considered the worst day to do so. The ship had been under construction for three building seasons, which was also considered bad luck. And when it was finally slid down the ways, the ship landed on its side instead of a proper entry into the water. Nonetheless, the ship was fitted out in St. Andrews, taken on a trial run around the island of Grand Manan. Everything seemed to be okay. And off they went to New River Beach and the night mill where they were to load deals. When they sailed up the bay in December of 1868 and arrived off New River Island, they had on board four sailors or four experienced seamen and seven men from Mascarene whose job was to unload the ballast stone and load the deals. They had no experience as sailors at all. And this may have led to the tragedy that was to follow. After they had unloaded the ballast, they went into Hagerty's Cove to have a few drinks. The pilot, the man who knew the waters the best, had a little too much to drink and stayed in Hagerty's Cove for the night. But the 11 men, their captain, went back aboard the ship. It was a calm evening, but it wasn't to stay that way for this tremendous gale that was blowing up the coast of Maine and entering the Bay of Fundy. When it struck the ship, it struck with a vengeance. With only four experienced men aboard, it flipped over in the storm and dragged into the cove by Knight's Mill. There, four men were found the next morning in the cove. The rest of the men, they were found along the shore of New River Beach within the next day or two. The Genii, when it came ashore, it was just in front of the night house. And this was where the first four bodies were brought up so that the coroner could come from St. George and examine the bodies. One body, though, did not show up for about six weeks later. That was the body of John Ryu. And his body drifted in the opposite direction of tides and winds and ended up at what they called at that time Barnabas Point. Today, that particular area is called Dead Man's Cove. Almost immediately, stories began to be told about a ragged sailor who had been seen wandering the beach. Those who saw him claimed that he called out and beckoned them to come closer, but few did. The sailor seemed confused, as if he didn't know how he had come to be there. Since the sailor was seen at Dead Man's Cove, people decided he must be John Ryu, the sailor whose body washed up on shore. These stories have continued to the present day. I always wondered about the story. Then last winter, doing some research, I came across the actual finding of the body of John Ryu in Barnabas Head, or on Barnabas Head, in this cove that at that time had no name and which is now known as Dead Man's Cove. 
I concluded from this that this story of John had been in the community as a folk tale or folklore for many, many years, and that there was, in fact, some substance to that story. One woman submitted a very frightening report to the local police department. She was driving past New River Beach when she saw a man standing in the road. He seemed to appear out of nowhere. She slammed on her brakes but was certain she had hit him. She ran from the car to see if he was injured, but there was nobody there. The van was undamaged and the police leader found no sign of anyone. The woman was very frightened and embarrassed. Ironically, this would not be her last encounter with the ghosts of New River Beach. There's another ghost that walks the beach at New River. The same woman who had the vehicle encounter went to the shore one day. She saw a woman step out onto the high rocks about 20 yards away. The rocks are very treacherous, and she was concerned that the woman might jump, as she seemed very distraught. The woman turned toward her, and the moment they made eye contact, the mysterious woman vanished. There have been multiple encounters with this mystery woman, who always seems to be glimpsed on the high cliffs. One witness had gone down to the shore to meet a friend of his when he glimpsed the woman standing on the high rocks. Fearing that the woman might be suicidal, he called to her and ran to stop her. Hey! 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 His friend on the other side of the rocks heard the yelling and looked up and clearly saw the woman. He ran to help her. When the first man got to the top, he saw the woman vanish. He thought she must have jumped, but there was no sign of her on the rocks below. Both men had seen the same thing, but there was nobody there. There is one possible explanation. Records in the area indicate that the wife of one of the Genie's crew was shattered by the loss. She spent her days staring out into the ocean, hoping that he would return, even though he had been buried months ago. Eventually, her sadness became too much for her to bear, and she climbed these very rocks and threw herself off into the sea. Well, you've got all the ingredients here for a great ghost story, a ship that goes down with all hands on board, bodies washed onto the shore, one body missing, what could have happened to that body? That body eventually sweeps up on shore as well. And you've got a windswept beach, and over the course of time, lots of opportunity for people to either uh, imagine ghostly figures walking down the beach at night because they're feeling kind of nervous and expecting ghosts or perhaps to see some stranger walking down the beach and interpret this as the as the ghost of the uh, the dead sailor or the dead sailors wife or lover the beach is not the only haunted spot atop the cliffs is the night house where the crew of the genie was laid out the house has remained haunted since that tragic day. I'm Phyllis Farkasen, and I moved into this house back in 1984. It was uh, known as the Night House at that time. Phyllis recalled one very unusual experience. She had come home from work early and was exhausted. There were heavy curtains throughout the house used to keep up the draft, but it was warm day, so she left them open. She hung her coat up and left the closet door open to air and went upstairs. She was on the phone when she heard noises downstairs. She
she clearly heard the sound of curtains being pulled shut and of a heavy door slamming. She asked her friend to stay on the line and went downstairs to investigate. As she came down the stairs, the noises stopped and the house became completely silent. She discovered that the closet door had been slammed shut and that the curtains had been pulled closed. She was the only person in the house. Doors opening and closing were very common phenomena. Often Phyllis would be upstairs and would hear the doors continuously slamming shut. The noise would stop the instant somebody came down the stairs. Things would move around in the house too. You'd put something down and you'd go back for it and it wouldn't be there. Certain objects seemed to attract the ghost at the night house, especially antiques. Phyllis was brushing her hair with an antique brush she had been given. She set the brush down and left the room for a moment. As she was walking down the hall, she felt as if she were being watched, just a feeling, a presence near her. She turned back to her room and found that the brush had been moved from the dresser to the bed. This was not the first time that this had happened. The new owners of the night house have not had any ghostly experiences. Maybe the renovation of the night house has allowed the ghosts of the genii to move on. New River Beach is a very unique ghost story where one tragic event has led to three documented hauntings. Whether it is Lost Sailor, or the lady on the cliff, or the hauntings of the night house, there are too many reports to dismiss the tales of New Brunswick's most haunted beach. <laughs>